Hello and welcome. Before I get started, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning platform in which you have access to over 30,000 different courses of a wide variety of topics, including the one that I am currently doing, which is Polymer Clay and Sculpting Basics by Stephanie Kilgast. As an artist, you kind of have to be well-versed in a wide variety of different topics. And this is what I love about Skillshare. I'm able to do anything ranging from photography to business to a wide variety of fine art topics as well. Skillshare is going to be giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial to those who click the link in the description. And after that, it's only around $10 per month. Now, without further ado, let's begin sculpting. You're going to need some clay. So this is Super Sculpey Living Doll, and I like to use the color Baby. You're also going to need to have an oven handy. This acrylic clay roller, the Sculpey 5-way tool, which has a variety of different heads. Here is an X-Acto knife. You will also need a ceramic tile so you can take it directly from your workspace to the oven. Aluminum foil, tracing paper, and a clear plastic sleeve. Rubbing alcohol, as well as paper towels. You're going to need access to references. All of these materials can be found on my Amazon store, which I have listed in the description. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a template. I am going to take a picture that I found from the internet. So I am taking my tracing paper and I'm going to use my screen as a light box. I like to do the template because it allows me to figure out exactly how big I want to do a piece. When finding the right picture for your template, you want it to be as front facing as possible. Really take your time with a template, make sure all the edges are aligned so nothing gets taken out of place. I'm going to stick this in a clear plastic bag just so that I don't have any problems of transferring the graphite onto the clay. Here's the initial layer. Going right down into the middle. Also what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that it's really domed because the face, if you look at it and you feel your own face, it kind of does protrude out a lot. You can pull it to the side and kind of do a little comparison as far as like where it's at. So now everything's kind of loose, so I'm just going to put one more to just on top of this just to hold it all together. Using the same one from before, Sculpey Living Doll and Baby. So before I start anything, I am going to go wash my hands. What we're going to do here is we're going to want to condition the clay. You're going to warm it up with your hands, so you're just going to massage it. Just a word of caution, you don't want to get air bubbles in it. So it feels nice and warm. It feels like it's been conditioned. So you just want to put that onto your surface. Now we're going to grab our acrylic clay roller, which I tried to clean as much of the gunk off as possible. And we're just going to roll it out. There are going to be these little tiny bubbles, and you're going to want to pop them out when you see them. And now we're just going to lay it on top of the sculpt. So the first layer is always going to be bumpy. It's going to take a couple of layers before you really start to tone down that bumpiness. So I've gone ahead and rolled out some of these clay pieces right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay these on top of this. Make sure when you layer another piece of clay on top of a piece of clay that you had previously laid. You want to make sure that you are um, doing so, going, uh, smoothing it as you place it, just to make sure that when you are putting it, it is not trapping any air bubbles. This takes a lot of layers before it looks smooth. And before you can even think about smoothness, you have to think about form so you got to think about um, the shapes the shapes at different angles so here what i am doing i am bringing this section here the very mid section out further i am going to try as i'm building up the layers to take the clay and really get it to this line to make sure that widthwise and lengthwise it is fitting So here now what I'm doing is I'm going to put it at a 
about the same height. I filled out a lot of the sides. The brow is about right here. So I can tell the nose has to come down a lot and so does the brow bone. And this is just a point of reference. All of this is going to get filled out. And the eyes are going to be right about there. Right now I am actually standing up so that I can get a better look at um, where everything is going to go. Right here I am just going to go like that. The nose is going to come out to about there. So I have this little bit of clay and I think it will fit perfectly right there. Later on we are going to work on the smoothing aspect of it. Right now it's just adding bulk. So we are adding that brow bone, really bringing it down, as well as that nose. We want to make sure we bring it down. And we're starting to get a basic shape. Looking very closely at your reference picture. And looking at the profile view will help you a lot as well because it'll help you to see how far the forehead comes out, how far out and what shape is that nose tip, how far the lips come out as well as the chin. Now with the eyes it's really interesting. Everyone's eyes are slightly different but they tend to follow a similar uh, shape. So just look at your reference picture. Take a look at the shape of it where the inner corner starts and where the outer corner ends and you can mark it on the actual clay to get you an idea. Uh, the eyelid, I'm adding some more dimension to the eyelid by adding more clay, especially towards the center of the eyelid where the eyeball would protrude the most. And then something about PewDiePie that I found is that he's got some hooded eyes. Not super hooded, but he does have hooded eyes. So that brow bone, uh, right below that, you're going to be using more clay for people who have more hooded eyelids. So I kind of kept going in and adding more and more clay there. I'm also adding some smile eye wrinkles. He has a little bit of those, so it really gives the appearance of smiling eyes. And, and once again, I just keep piling and piling that eyelid more and more bulk to there. Now something that I was doing for a long time, I didn't really realize how much bulk that there is under the eyelid. This is one of those things that you just keep adding and adding and you feel like there's no end to it. You just get lost in it. Paying attention to the shape of the eyelid, the exact angle of all of the eye folds. Something that I also did that helped me get a hold or, or understand the form of the face is by looking at a real person and really just seeing where the bones are. And this is something that you'll catch on to the more that you practice. You'll be able to tell a little bit more about bone structure and really help you to get those sculpts even more accurate. Using the X-Acto knife to trim away the excess. This is something also characteristic of PewDiePie's face. He does have a bit of a prominent brow. So here, I, if you see me using my phone, what I like to do when I am doing the sculpt, I am constantly looking on my phone as I'm sculpting. And how that helps me is when I look at the phone, it gives me a perspective outside of my up-close perspective. So I'm able to see it from far away. And from far away, I can start to see exactly where it's off and what I can do to fix it. Now here, I am getting to a point where I'm starting to realize, oh, I still have a lot to go before it looks like him. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking little chunks of clay and I started getting a little impatient of smoothing out, smoothing out, smoothing out. So this is actually what I should have done from the get-go. And it is just adding like little canes of clay that I flattened out a little bit and just adding them to the clay in, in strategic places. So I'm just looking at that reference picture really closely and I'm realizing, okay, like around the eye and the bottom of the eye as well as above the eye, it needs a lot more clay. On the cheeks, they're a little bit too flat, so it makes his cheeks look sunken in, and his cheeks definitely do not have a sunken look, so I was adding that as well. The jawline was a little bit too small, so I made sure to add some more to the jaw. When I looked at the profile view, I also realized that the forehead was a little bit more um, inwards, and I wanted it to protrude more, so I added some more clay there. And then once I felt like I had added enough, I had began to smooth it out. Now, 
once you start getting it to where you think that it looks good and it's starting to look closer and closer to the subject, you're gonna wanna start using a lot smoother of a touch when you're working with the clay. And I'm just continuing to bring in more and more little strips of clay in the areas that need to be filled out more. I try to get a lighting source that is very similar to the picture that was being taken. So the picture that I was looking at was kind of lit from the front, a little bit above the front. And having a good light source will really help you to get the shape right as well because you can use the light as a hint. And in this part, I am adding the skin textures. So I'm using a variety of different tools. I decided that this tool right here that I'm using, which is just like a little small uh, bulb at the very end, was the best for making little tiny pore effects. So at first it's gonna look a little bit over the top, but the more that you add, the more realistic that it'll look. So I'm just adding tons and tons and tons of little pores everywhere. If you look at your skin up close, you'll have lots of little pores, and this is what makes it look more closer to real life. So now I am taking that picture that I took and I am layering it on top of each other. I tried to get it as close in similarity of um, like how far away the picture was taken as the original picture. And I am aligning the eyes using um, the opacity of the PewDiePie picture on top of my sculpt to align the eyes. And then I'm looking, if you see, I'm kind of marking off where it needs to be fixed. So getting up really close and toggling between the original picture and the picture of my sculpt and seeing, okay, the nose needs to come up a bit, especially the nostrils, and the mouth needs to come up and the jaw needs to be made smaller. I have the Photoshop reference right in front of me, so I'm gonna be toggling back and forth between the piece that I have made and also the reference. So now that it's facing me a little bit more, so I'm just gonna push it upwards. Again, use very, very soft movements. You don't want to do anything too drastic. We're also going to have to push up the nostrils. Now, here's where it's kind of hard. You don't know exactly how far to go up, so kind of keep it minimal. Then we're going to take another picture, put it back on Photoshop, and then see if we got it right the second time. So there's a couple of things I noticed with the mouth. I'd say just follow that same line, just bring it up. So this smile line isn't as pronounced so I'm just trying to smooth. And if you start feeling that you're getting too hasty, you're gonna wanna slow down. So I'm just blending the seams very softly here. So we get that smoothness, now we're just gonna give it the form. It's a lot of pushing and pulling. Now let's get this jawline better. That this side is coming out. A little bit so we're gonna start by where the ear would be so the ear would be about here so we're just gonna start very very slowly and gently pulling back so if you wanted to you can even mark to where you think it would be so I'm gonna mark to about say it okay and we're just gonna follow that same line, just like that, smooth it out. Be very gentle with your other hand too. You don't want to remove anything you don't didn't mean to. We're gonna take a bit off the bottom jaw, so we're gonna take about that much. Just kind of marking it very lightly. You wanna make sure you keep the vantage point when you're looking at it as if you're looking at it head on. So, making sure I'm directly above it. That's why I have this at an angle so that it's looking as if I'm looking straight at his face. And just very lightly cut away. I would say take thin shavings off at a time. Now you just smooth out what you got. So if you see here, it's kind of like a mess down here. It's a little bit chunky. We're just gonna smooth that out. A quick picture to see what it looks like if it's looking accurate. Then I'll go in into the final skin textures again um, over the, some of the parts where I smoothed it out. Actually, I kind of like where it's looking right now. I think smoothing it out a little bit actually made it look more realistic because the skin textures were a little bit too intense. So 
let's take this picture once again. So when you take a picture really up close, it's going to have a much larger nose as opposed to if you take a picture from farther away. So I'm just going to take a step back and I'm going to take a picture from a little bit of a ways away. Once more, try to get it as centered as possible. Put that on Photoshop and see before I do anything further. So just looking at the picture that I took now as opposed to earlier, if you can see here. So right here. This is my what I'm sending to myself. This was a picture from earlier, and this is the new picture. And I can already tell it looks more like PewDiePie. It's getting closer. It's those micro adjustments that make all the difference. I'm just going to take this chin. Some of the chin in the picture is a little bit too... There. I'm just taking that back a little bit. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to just, I actually like, now that I've reworked it, how some of the, um, so how some of the pores have flattened out. So I think I'm not even going to go in and do any more of the um, little tool. I think I'm going to smooth out some of what I did with my hands, just ever so slightly. And because I left this out for a couple of days, it kind of got a little bit, it got a little bit linty so so this is the last step and what it is is we're just going to clean up the clay as much as possible i'm not going to bake it right now what i'm going to do is before i bake it the next part of the series will be rooting the hair so i'm going to be giving him hair up top here i'm going to give him hair here and his eyebrows and his eyelashes as well so we're going to do that in this step while the clay is still raw and then after that I have three more parts where I'm going to show you how to make realistic eyeballs I'm going to show you how I paint this new and improved painting technique so we're just trying to remove the lint or at least as much of the lint as possible as well as the dirt and it also kind of gives it a nice smooth finish you want to make sure you're very gentle when you're doing this because you definitely do not want to take too much um, this essentially melts the clay a little bit so it's also good for smoothing out, but you definitely don't want to move around too much of the details that you already got in there. Smooth out any wrinkles, get rid of some of that lint, and also get rid of fingerprints, which is really nice because fingerprints tend to get all over the clay. Now what I'm going to do this time that I didn't do before is I'm going to, between now and the day that I have to root the hair, I'm going to cover the clay with a little bit of saran wrap and that is going to keep the clay from getting uh, dust on it in between now and then. So I'm going to do some of that lip texture. So when I'm looking at his picture, his lips are not super pronounced in that they're not, um, they don't have a whole lot of like wrinkles in them. So I'm just adding very light lines where the lips would be and just follow the reference as an idea to see how the wrinkles look some of them have like some like little lines that go upwards some of them kind of like twirl around with that being said I hope that I helped I hope that you guys can take some of these tips and create your own face using my tips I have all of the materials that I used in the description and if you have any questions at all feel free to comment and I will respond to it as soon as I can. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll catch you guys on the next one.